Have you ever been amazed by what some people can do with their leftovers? We all know cooks that are able to take odds and ends of unrelated food out of their refrigerators, mix them together, and before you know it, they have a wonderful gourmet meal. We have also seen the results that are created when leftover fabric, thread, and embellishments are put to use by those with a talent for the needle arts. They are literally a feast for the eyes. In fact, I am sure that many of the heirloom baby and children's garments that we treasure today were often fashioned from leftovers. Today in my sewing room, we have projects and techniques that will surely inspire you to find uses for those leftovers that you just couldn't bear to throw away. Welcome to my sewing room. have something so exciting for you today. I bet when you looked at these, this wonderful uh, nightgown or sundress, it would be beautiful as either, a and this camisole, I bet you thought, well, Martha's going to have smocking today. That looks like smocking. Well, it is serger smocking, serger pintuck smocking. Isn't this fabulous and brand new? And the best part is, of course, it's easy and fast since it's on the serger. Let's just see how this fabulous serger pintuck smocking was done. All right, you're going to use a roll. You're going to do a serger pintuck using your roll hem, and you fold the fabric back. In order to do a serger pin tuck, you fold your fabric back and go down the side. Okay, I've got one done here in red thread so you can see it easily. All right, you folded it back and I did the serger pin tuck. Now we're going to make those pin tucks. We've got several going across. Create a piece of fabric with the serger pin tucks. Now, I don't know how well you can see it, but you're going to trace with your water soluble pin. You're going to trace a, a line about every three quarters of an inch. Are good so far? Then you're going to come in and pull two of these together. Now let me move my hands out of the way. You're going to pull two of these together and do a bar tack. Skip the first line, come on down, pull two more together and do a bar tack. Skip the next line, come on down, pull two together and do a bar tack. Now please do use your open toe embroidery foot. Now here's the next the next system here. All right, now you see I've done the bar tack, the bar tack, and the bar tack. Okay, I don't want to do any more sewing right on those two lines. I'm going to go over, and you will need to use your serger tweezers or easier. I've just got a little pair. You're going to pull together two you see there, I went down one and pulled together two more of the serger pin tucks, and I'm going to bar tack. Then I'll move on down, skipping one. I'm working on this second row now, and pull two of them together and bar tack. Then after I go all over the whole piece of created fabric with my pulling together and bar tucks, there is my serger pin tuck smocking, and I am just so excited about this technique. I'm so happy to have as my guest today my dear friend and business colleague, Missy Billingsley. Missy is an educational consultant for Baby Lock USA. Missy, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Martha. It's always wonderful to be here. And your wonderful new technique. Oh, This is a fun technique. <laughs> you are going to love it. I know you already do. What we're going to work with is a straight piece of fabric. To create your serger pin tucks, you're going to take and fold a piece of fabric, and you're going to work on the fold. We're actually creating rolled hem pin tucks. Okay, so you're going to fold your fabric, and you'll see the first one. I've already stitched a pin tuck along this line. So then you're going to fold a second line, stitch along again. Just so you can see that, I'm going to show you at the machine. You're going to take and fold your fabric. You're going to slide it underneath your presser foot. And I like to use the edge of my presser foot as my guide. That way I have even consistent pin tucks all the way across. Depending on the size of your presser foot, you may get pin tucks that are a little farther apart than they would be if you had a smaller presser foot. So this is using a larger presser foot. And you'll see that I've got the large apart pin tucks. Okay? That's all there is to create that. You're going to create the whole piece of fabric. You're going to need a pretty fair amount for what you're going to create. Okay, so next we're going to come in and we're going to look. These are a lot of little pin tucks that I've created. Then I've taken a ruler. You're going to mark 
lines along your pin tucks about three quarters of an inch apart. Depending on the size of your presser foot, they may be a little larger than three quarters of an inch. But these are three quarters of an inch apart. Then you're going to start working to create the pin tucks. Always use a water soluble pen to mark your pin tucks, to mark your lines. That way you know it's going to come out. Okay. As Martha showed, we're going to bring two lines together and we're going to put a bar tag. This is done on the sewing machine. So we're going to bar tag here and it's easiest to work with one line at a time when you're doing all these. So create your first bar tag at the top, work your way to skip a line, come down to the next one, do another bar tag, then come down and do another bar tag. Okay. You're going to do that across the entire fabric. Then when you're finished with that, you're going to come in and you're going to squeeze those other two lines together. These two lines right here, you're going to pull them together. Use your open toe foot on your sewing machine, slide it up in there, do a bar tack right where those lines cross. So once you finish that, then you will have all these little smocking pin tucks. What you could do when you're finished, if you like that effect, especially on um, a beautiful garment, maybe a a wedding dress. You never know what you're going to make with this. You could take little beads and insert them into each of the spots so you would have a, an additional beauty to your garment that you're making. Okay, I've got a couple of samples on here and by the way when you're adding those beads that's just a little bit of hand work but it's okay. <laughs> Surgery to machine so to bad. hand. <laughs> Surgery to machine to hand or you could even use those beautiful hot fix crystals to stick it in place. It'd be beautiful. Just wait till after you're finished making your garment to do all that hand work because that way you don't take a chance of sewing over any beads or any crystals. So these are just a couple of pieces that I had left from the camisole and the nightgown. So it shows you this one is a silk charm mousse. It's a wonderful fabric, but I think it would be especially beautiful with like a little seed pearl sewn in each little spot. And this has a number of things you could do with it. Add it to little girls' dresses, create a smocked insert for a purse, a tote bag, a pillow, just about anything. Well, Missy, this is absolutely precious. Put that, put that whole camisole over there so they can see exactly how it is. Isn't that so sweet? I love the band of the camisole. Mm -hmm. Missy, anytime you have a band of some kind on a pattern, that would be the perfect place to do this. It you know, like be. on this bodice band. I don't think you'd want to do the whole front of it. That would take you a long no, time. No, that would it. take you a while. The bodice band, what I did is I cut it about two inches larger than my pattern piece. And it was actually about three times the amount of fabric that I needed for the band. So it's going to take up quite a bit of fabric to make your piece, but it's well worth the effort. You'll love it. Oh, it is so pretty. Serger smocking. See, Missy, you just got something brand new. Serger pin tuck smocking. I love it. It's fun. Oh, and when I first looked at them when you came to the studio, I thought, oh, Missy's done smocking. And yes, you did on the Serger. <laughs> I, I love it. And now surgery. Missy has some sewing inspirations to share with you. Missy, I'm so excited about this. I think we can share with our viewers that you created this for a very famous Australian magazine. I did. This was a very fun project. She's been after me for a little while to create a cool project for her magazine using the serger lace technique. This is stitched on a cotton netting with a thicker chain thread in the chain looper. It's um, So when you are finished with it, it gives you this nice, beautiful sheer effect. It's on the sleeves. It's also across the top of the blouse. It's on the little purse. And then, oh, the little purse is so adorable. Yep. Then the flowers are applique flowers, and they're just stitched on with a zigzag stitch and little hot fixed crystals in the center of all the flowers. Oh, it was a fun project. Missy, this is beautiful. I would love one of those myself. Oh, the beautiful Christmas dress. I think you have some of this, more of this beautiful uh, chain it stitch is. lace. Don't you? The serger lace, lace in the oh. sleeves. Um, we have serger created pin tucks at the bottom band. That we've just done serger pin tucks. Yep, these are serger cover stitch pin tucks. A little bit different than cover the ones we did. Cover tucks, stitch pin tucks. Cover stitch pin tucks. Then we have a band of puffing. This was also created with a cover stitch because you can gather it. Serger puffing. Stitch. Serger <laughs> puffing. Yes, ma'am. I love the serger. <laughs> then we have a great big ruffle at the end. And all right. Very cute dress. And a beautiful blouse with all those same wonderful techniques with the. Just, and what kind of pin tucks are these on the serger? These are cover stitch pin tucks. Cover They're done stitch with a special pin tuck foot. Very tailored and very mm -hmm. beautiful. Missy, I love this. This is the uh, 
I would call this a christening dress bag. It would be a christening dress bag or um, a fancy dress bag because it's got the sheer peekaboo effect in the front. You can still see a little bit of what the dress looks like that you have in the bag. And natural fibers too, so it yes. would breathe for something that's really an heirloom. Okay, Missy, I love the circus baby's quilts. Oh, how cute, the little circus baby. And I love your choice of, of uh, cotton uh, ginghams with all the Well, when I saw those, those colors babies. of the fabric and I saw the designs, I knew exactly what I had to do because I love the designs and the fabric and they just went together perfectly. The little circus clown and then the carousel horse and the carousel goose. I think I love the fact we have a lot of animals on the carousel and then the little under the big top. Oh what a fun way to decorate a baby's room. Another little carousel horse and then the little clown that is, let me see what it says. Well it just has a little cross stitch on it. The little clown with the blooms and a carousel bunny. Yes, oh, those, this, are, those this are very is so good designs adorable. to stitch out. And, the quilt and went I together just really love good. the fact that you used all of the different colors of gingham. What a wonderful, happy baby quilt that makes. A very happy baby quilt. Ah, Missy, thank you so much. And now Missy has a So Quick, So Easy project for you. Missy, my mother and grandmother always taught me not to waste anything and to save everything. You'll n always need it. I can't wait to see what you're going to do with those scraps. <laughs> well, scraps can be a, fun, a lot of fun to work with, and we're going to show you some things that I think you're really going to like. As I showed in the last segment, I had a blouse that was created out of this piece of fabric. As you can see, typically in your heirloom, you're going to create a piece of fabric larger than what you need. So you can see here's my neckline cut out, but am I going to throw all this fabric away? I don't think so. I love these laces. They're already put together. All I've got to do is work with them now. Okay? So we're going to take this fabric and we're going to work with it. This is just our scraps. Okay? I've also got some pieces of some serger created pin tucks with cover stitch, some serger lace, some regular uh, French cotton lace. Anything that's, you know, a couple inches long, you can work with that and that's what we're going to do. Okay. So right here, what I've got is a headband pattern. This is just one that I made up. It's about two and a half inches long across the middle. Then it's about 10 inches long to go around about an adult size head. You'll need to make an adjustments if you're gonna make a child side. The end down here, this is a two and a half inch end, you're gonna cut that on the fold. So when you open it up, you can see I've already got this piece put together. You're gonna have this long strip. And I've taken, this was from a little baby quilt that I made. This is just some short scraps of lace. Anything that you can work with that's like I said. In this particular case, maybe three inches long, two and a half, you can work with it, okay? So next we're gonna take that. So we've got our pattern, it's already cut out. Next you're gonna need a little casing to go in the back. We're gonna create an elastic casing. This piece of fabric is about two inches by five and a half or so. You need about a two and a half piece of, piece of elastic. Then you're going to take the casing, you're going to turn it so it right sides together with a quarter inch seam. Then you're going to put the elastic up in the casing, okay? Sew across that end there to hold the elastic in place. Then you're going to reach in with a pair of tweezers all the way up to the elastic, pull it down to the end, stitch that together so now you have your elastic band, okay? Next, we'll take a lining. The lining is cut the same way as the headband. You're gonna take and place it right sides together, and if you'll notice, I've pinned my little elastic piece in one end. I've got a safety pin in the other end so I can pull it through. So we're gonna place it right sides together. You're gonna to lay it flat. You're gonna sew up one side seam. You're gonna sew across the end with the elastic, and you're gonna sew down the other side seam, leaving an opening in one end so you can turn it, okay? The next one I've already got part way turned, and you can see I've got a little piece of uh, safety pin in here, and I've pulled it through, so I'm pulling out my headband. And now then I would take it to my ironing board, of course, and press it nice and flat. Then once you've got it pressed nice and flat, you're gonna take the other end, turn under a little seam, push your elastic up in there, and sew across the end. Here are a couple that are finished. These are just regular fabric headbands, but you can see where the elastic goes in the back and you just put them on your head. How cute and headbands are so stylish they right are now. Very Thank stylish. you so much, Missy. You're welcome. And now I have some hand embroidery to share with you. I'm 
so pleased to have as my guest my dear friend Beverly Sheldrick from New Zealand. Beverly has authored several books on needlework and is a regular contributor to So Beautiful magazine. Beverly, welcome to the show. Martha, thank you. It's, it's just always such a pleasure to be here. I seem to have been doing it for ages, but I just love every time I, I'm here with you and with your viewers. Now, Martha, you know I love making booties. And I love <laughs> these booties. Oh, and so, so I sweet. couldn't resist doing these beautiful little Lily of the Valleys on these wee booties. You can see there's one on the front and one on each side. Um, you'll also notice that I've used just pink stitching and top stitching to add a little bit of extra difference to them. So here we go. Um, you will see that I have once more, I've got a stem with a good curve on it here and I've just done that uh, using flash or you could use stranded cotton and I've put in a stem which has a good curve in it. I've then, you can see that I've got just a little tight little French knot. The French knots are wonderful, aren't they? We can use Absolutely. them in so many ways. <laughs> so I've got a tight little French knot there. You'll see then that I've got a slightly looser or slightly bigger French knot here. There's the, the top of it. Then you will see that I have here, I've got three little straight stitches. The center one, of course, goes straight down. The two just angle, fan out either side. So here we are. We've got, there's the first three stitches. Now we've got this bottom section, which is an open bell. And you will see that I started with a straight stitch. I've got a roll on the end of it. And that's quite important there. And then we have one either side, just slightly fanned. And again, that roll. These two are just slightly uh, shorter than these outer ones. And you know how lily of the valley are. They sort of appear to have a wee puff in them. And then to finish them, you can see I've got just a straight stitch here. To, and then a second one on this side. You will also see that I've got some just some little outline stitches there just to put in a vein on this stitch here. So here we are. Just those stitches just to give us, you wouldn't do one quite as long as that, but just like that to give us our stem. Now we've got to the point, so here we are, we're going to put in this tight little French knot like this. So the first one will be a tight one like that. And then you, you can see that the second one will come approximately there. Now I've got to that. So there's the first one. There's the, the slightly looser one. Now here's the third one. Just a little straight stitch like this. And like that. Fan it. Bring it over here like this and slightly to the side like that, just like that. And then the second, the third one will come over here like this. And so there's the third little bell. Now we have on this side, you can see how I um, think we've got room to do this one actually here. So we'll come down like this. So there's the first one. So just lie it on the ground, ladies. Put this like that and then bring this up and over the needle like that and bring it down. So we've got that looking like that. The next one will come to this side and it will be done in exactly the same way. You'll notice I left the needle there until such time as I had come up, brought it down like this. So then I can take that out and once more bring it over like that. And in that way I get, I keep that little roll on the bottom and as I said, I'll leave it to that side. Just leave it there until I've got the thread right back there, pop that in and over again like that. Now, 
this, the leaves are just a straight stitch, no great mysteries there, just a straight stitch like this. And there we are, no mysteries there. It's amazing, Martha, just how so often just these very, very simple stitches can make all the difference. And yet we're doing the same thing over and over again. Well, that's what's um, so much fun about embroidery. You know, Beverly, we've talked about uh, sewing as being therapy. I think, I think embroidery and sewing fall in the same category of just relaxation. And I think it's fun to do those stitches over and over again. I think everybody should do a little <laughs> embroidery every day. A little embroidery I every day keeps the doctor away. Is that pretty good? I see. That's exactly what I think. I think you're right. Oh, Beverly, thank you so much. And now I have a wonderful home decorating segment for you. This is a just plain and pretty project. Very, very, very simple to make. This one, actually, if you had some leftover pieces, you could also make this. This is just a little uh, rectangular pillow with uh, some pretty trim, some pretty little French ribbon trim, actually, with a little circle at the back, some puffing, and a real pretty piece of silk dupioni on the back, and so easy to make, just pretty fabrics. You could make these to go in any room of your house. All right, first of all, you're gonna trace on your template for your little diamond at the end and the big square, which is on point on the middle of it. Then we're gonna get some trim. Pin the trim, just simply stitch it. Isn't that pretty trim with the little purple flowers and the green? And you're gonna make the little loop at the bottom, uh, turn it around and come all around, a little bit like lace shaping. So we put the trim on and then piping is absolutely makes any pillow pretty and I love a tailored looking pillow. When you make the piping and you get ready to sew it on, I might add that you need to be sure you clip the piping and especially clip around the curve so it will lay down and sew down really pretty and really flat. Make your pretty piping and then the absolute last thing to do is to get your backing cut and sew your backing to the front and then stuff your pillow and you have a very easy project to make. And as we said a little bit earlier, you might even have some pretty things at home that are already there that you can make a wonderful pillow for your house. And next I have a very, very interesting piece to share with you from my vintage collection. This is a very interesting piece because actually it's the top dress and I feel reasonably sure, well I know there was a petticoat or an underdress that went under here because it's just not the right proportion to have been a dress and it's slid on the side. Pretty little dress, has beading and gathered lace edging around the neckline, lots of release tucks and also very interesting treatment on the sleeve with the tucks on the sleeve and more beading. A beautiful, beautiful embroidery, which I might add, we had have recreated this one in machine embroidery. If any of you have a, a machine, we do have a machine embroidered version of this. The little midi skirt has one, two, three, four, five tucks with crossed pin tucks. And this is what I think is so interesting. See how the dress is slit on the side? So this had to have had a little dress underneath it or else a very elaborate slip. I also think that the back is extremely pretty and I left it unbuttoned since the buttons are covered, a covered placket. I left it unbuttoned to show you that all of the original buttons are on this dress and that's kind of unusual. I do love to get pieces where all the original buttons. See the pretty release pin tucks all the way across and the beautiful piece of French insertion which is absolutely fabulous. These clothes are so fascinating to me and I love to think about the women as they were sewing these clothes just like we sew heirlooms today for someone that we love very, very much. For my sewing from the heart today, I have a letter from Betty from Benbrook, Texas. Dear Martha, our quilting sewing group has a great time working together on projects to bring a little sunshine to someone else. Some of our projects include for our church members, signature wall hanging for our interim pastor, a lap throw for a breast cancer survivor, and we work with Our Lady's mission group to make a baby quilt for each new baby in our church. For the community, we have made quilts for hurricane victims, drawstring bags for toys given for children at a local children's hospital, school clothes for children in a local shelter, 
and bags for personal items for ladies in a local shelter. Betty, this is an absolutely wonderful letter. I thank you so much for writing you and your uh, church members there in Texas. It's wonderful to know that you're sewing from the heart and that you're sewing for those less fortunate. Thank you to all of you who are doing that kind of sewing. I also want to thank you for coming to be with me today in my sewing room. I really want to invite you back next time.